Hello everybody, it is Professor Rocco ya boy here coming at you again with another Age of Sigmar Masterclass, Episode 2. In this episode, we're going to focus on deployment and like how to hide your game plan and how to optimize deployment. Because, you, you know, you keep hearing the saying, you don't win in deployment, but you can definitely lose in deployment. I, as your boy, am here to help you fix that problem. So... First off, let's just talk theory. Let's just talk this out here. All right, follow me, camera guy. So first thing that's going to come through here is choosing sides after the roll-off. You know, I have three key things that I keep in mind if I get to choose. First, does one side actually benefit me in my game plan or, like, you know, have really beneficial terrain rules if you're using them? You know, is there, like, a bunch of uh, things that I can hide in for cover saves? Is there a lot of sight blocking stuff? Do I have a bunch of mystical terrain floating around to give me that six up, feel no pain that's in the current rule set? Um, you know, it, it, are there enough buffs to me? Is there arcane terrain to give me extra stuff to cast? Um, next, more importantly, does one side hurt my opponent? You know, like let's say you know, one side has, oh, I don't know, arcane and uh, commanding terrain, and the other side has arcane and nullification. You know, if I'm playing against someone like Ossiarch Bone Reapers that don't use command points, I'm giving them the side with commanding to stop them from getting that extra unbind on me. And, you know, if, if there's ways like, like a lot of stuff's deadly or volcanic that they have to set up in, I am sure as hell forcing them over there if I can help it. Uh, that My third thing is we're in a shooting meta currently, in a bit of a spell dom meta. As of uh, late February 2021, you know, take that for the timestamp there. And if there is any line of sight blocking terrain that I can take, even if I am the shooting army, and if I can pick the side with line of sight and force my opponent to have to be out in the middle of the field standing there looking like they want to be a pincushion, it is my job to oblige them and make them a pincushion. Next. Uh, you know, you want to deploy your army without giving away your game plan. You know, it's uh, you don't want to lose the plot, as the Aussies say. Actually, a lot of people say that nowadays. And it's a great saying because if you have, let's say, a key wizard in your army that you need to get that buff off first turn, or this is like the wizard, like you got some big mastermind five-head combo where you need to go and cast uh, the Umbral Spell Portal to shoot a damage spell out and get another... You, know, you can go on, you get the idea. You need that wizard to be able to be out of unbind range. Why would you put that down first and on the line where your opponent can put their unbind within 30 inches of you right there? Why would you do that? Don't do that. That Stop doing that. Look at me. Stop it. Stop it. We're going to save our important hammer units and our synergy pieces and our wizards or priests towards the end if we can. All right. This this also goes with where are you going to uh, or when are you going to figure out if you're going first or second? Like, let's say you're out dropping somebody. Uh, you know, this is where we're kind of like, all right. Do I want to give them first turn because they're deploying far enough back that I'm not going to damage them and I'm going to force them up into the middle of the field? Or, hey, they're deployed right on the line at the deployment line. I They're in range. I'm going to do this. And I can then make sure that I deploy just out of their unbind range to give me my plus five to charge or whatever the hell GW clicks up next onto my unit to get them going. And... Not only is this applicable for, say, wizards, if we go back to the master class on list building with your three hammers, and let's say you want to give away the turn as part of your uh, battle plan there because you're the strategic genius, you're Alexander the Greater. Well, you wouldn't be greater if you had all your hammers up front, gave away the turn, then they all got charged and shot and died. So we need to protect those hammer units and these wizards and the priests, and you get the idea. Uh, and also, a thing we can add on here is setting traps for your opponent. And, you know, all right, all right. Rocco, are you trying to set up a gotcha moment? No. No, I'm not. 
Because at this point, we've already set our list. I will tell my opponent everything my list does, every spell, every buff. I've got my spiel down to like two, three minutes. But if it, we're at a tournament, we got 15 to talk through setting up and deploying. I'm like, yeah, okay, this unit's really the linchpin of my thing. I will tell someone that to their face and then kick their ass. And I can say that with confidence because I've done that way too much. Uh, so what I'm talking about was setting up traps. Remember how we had chaff units to like run up, grab objectives, we don't care if they die. And we also have our hammers and our anvils. We have all that going. I want, if my opponent can deep strike, I want to set up something that looks really juicy that I actually in the long term plan don't care if I lose. So if I give them first turn, right, I can dictate where they're going to deep strike because they're going to think they're going to kill off like 200, 400 points in my unit or even better. Let's say I've got like my, uh, like a free guild general on Griffin, right? I've got them, even better, Volturnos in my deepkin build. Okay, I can set him up so he's just out of range. Like, let's say they make that crazy 9, 12-inch charge. And then when they go to pile in, they're not going to get to him. I can set that up because I'm going to deploy smart. And then they're going to be right in the middle of my forces where I can bring all the remaining 1,800 points of my army to bear on, let's say, four or 500 points they brought out from Deep Strike because I deployed smart. And then from there... You know, I'm up net 300 points, and I have the ability to maybe go for a double turn after that. So now we're going to actually go into the game here. We're going to go off onto a Tabletop Simulator, Rocco's best friend here. We're going to go into my army. This is my Hammer Hall army that I'm known for bringing. This is my uh, my lit litmus test, litmus test to go and see if we actually have, you know, we're up to snuff here for tournament armies. Uh, I've got my free guild general on Griffin, who's in a battalion with the Demigriffs. I love that battalion. They're all lances and shields and swords. They're my hammers that I can also kind of make into anvils. I've got two units of Eternal Guard backed by a Luminarch. Uh, they're truly my anvils. And because I'm using the Luminarch for, like, its spells, it's got an extra artifact for me because of the battalion. Um, this actually, with all the buffs that I can put onto my stuff, they're budget uh, Phoenix Guard. And they work really well because you got to put a lot of points into killing them. And in a Hammer Hall army, they're immune to battle shock in my territory, so you have to kill them all. And they're, they're just they're just a hundred and thirty point Phoenix Guard, while currently the Phoenix Guard are one sixty. It saves me a lot of points. And then we've got my Sorceress, and then her sacrificial I mean Dark Shards, where we uh we kill one of them for the Sorceress, get plus two to casting. If I end up getting Arcane Terrain, she's plus three to cast. They can run, shoot, and charge. And they're a big enough unit where your opponent has to deal with them, and then this could be the trap. And they are also uh, cheap enough. I don't care if they die. <laughs> Couldn't get less. Couldn't give two shits. As long as I have at least two units of my Demigriffs and this Griffin on the table, or at least three units out of the four of these, I am always gonna have a chance to win a game of Age of Sigmar with this army. And so now let, let's put what we've talked about into practice here. So we're gonna be layering our units, keeping our synergy pieces together, and my first drop, let's say I pick this side. Oh look, Arcane Terrain, you love to see it. This is set up for shifting objectives. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw these Eternal Guard off over here behind the church. Alright, we're gonna Select a little bit, put them up here. You get the idea. They're going over there. So I'm going to start off with, I'm not giving away any of my game plan by throwing Eternal Guard down like they're going to go near that objective. The X's on this are to show the parts where I can't deploy, by the way. Because uh, shifting objectives has kind of a weird rectangle box deployment. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But from here, I'm screening off this side. I'm setting up where I know my elves Move six. They have a musician for plus one to run. They yeah, I run them. They go at least another inch. I can take this objective and be fine. Then my next drop. Oh my god! I'm again not giving away anything here. Holy crap! Same thing. Other side. 
Again, my opponent doesn't know what I'm trying to do yet if they've never seen me play my army before. And they know all my rules because I've told them because I'm not an asshole. And we're moving on. So next, I've got this uh, block of dark shards here. Again, this is kind of giving away the plot, but not terribly. We're just going to put it down here, make them pretty. So this is my chaff, but it's also my forward screen. Again, I'm putting them in the middle of the table because they can run and shoot and charge. They can affect either side objective. And with this army, or in shifting objectives in general, you never want to play for all three objectives. Not truly. You want to go for two, control that two-thirds of the board, and then push your opponent off to the side. And with this setup, it works for me. Now, if my opponent's smart, they realize, oh, hey, Rocco put down his dark shards. His sorceress needs to be nearby so she can stab one for to sell them her bathwater. And also, wow, there's arcane terrain. He's probably putting a wizard here. So this isn't giving away too much, but now you know that I'm firmly committing to that. I'm not trying to fake someone out. So I'm going to go and put my sorceress right over there. Got all the bathwater for the boys. It's going good. My next drop is going to be this wizard on Luminarch to give myself feel no pains to protect my wizard my sorceress who's rocking a six up save normally and has a chance to get killed and I've got my luminarch here to give the funeral pain to the eternal guard maybe Foz protection even to make them uh, if they get into the woods uh, make them be a two up armor save with a six up funeral pain negative one to be hit hey they are really freaking tanky at this point in time also got a little bit of a trap here my sorceress isn't necessarily fully screened. Yes, I'm using this tavern here and this luminarch here, but if someone's like, hey, I can go and take Rocco's wizard out, guess what? I don't care if they take my wizard out because my next drop is my battalion. And then this is where we start deploying smart. I've got my griffin here. Oh, deploying smarter. I've been smart the whole time. Don't worry. I'm so smart they call me Alec. Um, we're going to go over... Here with the demigriffs, I'm going to make sure that if they did hit this, and let's say I can't give away, like, I'm, I present a juicy enough target for them to go run through my shit while taking the objective, and then they're closer for my 10-inch move demigriffs, my 15-inch move griffin, to shove that lance deep inside them. And hopefully they're not so natch and they won't like it too much. Uh, then I've got this unit of demigriffs over here, and I've got this unit of demigriffs off to the side. So again, we're layering stuff. I'm denying deep striking, so you can't just pop here. And if you look at me over here, there is not nine inches between these units in order to fit somebody. Even over here, this is going to help push this out. So you can't get cheap deep strikes on me. All right, we're going to actually move this elf over here, so we're actually legal. And you know, this is my setup. For this kind of an army. Now, how did I know before without measuring that my wood elves are going to actually be able to get onto the objective? And I can do that quick math. All right. So we're deploying 12 inches away from the middle line, right? That's 24 inches. That means this middle dot's got to be uh, 12 inches from my line. That means holy with it. Well, not even holy, just. We score, in this scenario, six inches from the middle dot, which, again, we're going to see here. Boom, six. These guys have to move seven inches to claim that objective. Now, here's a, here's another thing with, like, trapping. I'll give you a little free thing on the next one. So let's say we go up here, you know, erase the deployment lines. Boom, we got ourselves a regular game. If I'm out dropping somebody in this kind of a setup, I am giving them the first turn. I want them to move closer to me. I am I have shooting, yeah, but a lot of that's a bait. I am really a cavalry army. I am hard hitting, and we are just going to try to go about that. Ignore the uh, ignore the, uh, the man in the curtain there in the corner there with my uh, notifications. So we're going to go up. I want to give away first turn. They move up, and it sets me up for that awesome double turn. And if I'm given the turn, these Eternal Guard, like I said, we're running the hell up over here. We've auto six these guys from all my awesome command points because I'm in range. We're out in the woods. Great. Love life. That, was, that wasn't even 13 inches. Awesome. But my next thing, that because I deployed smart, 
I can shift out my demigriffs. I've got my disposable chaff. They've run up. They were able to take pot shots at somebody because I've got a 30 inch effective range with them. And we still kind of hang back and screen. We've got layers of defense set within layers of if I get the turn, great. And even then, let's say, you know, they took first turn and here I am because I deployed smart. I don't have to fully commit to like be like, hey, I'm playing for the double turn and I win. Oh no, I didn't get it and I lost. Well, now, because I did this right, I'm actually in an okay position either way the turn goes. And with that, we've got a couple more things. So let's say my opponent had a bunch of deep strike and they just didn't actually uh, deploy anything on the board. What do I do in that scenario? Panic! Not panic. Don't panic. Don't. We're okay. Woo-sa. You do the same box deployment. What do you care? You're not playing in your opponent's head. You try to play mind games with them, you're going to lose. It's not what we're here for. So instead, what we're going to do is breathe, set up our deployment in that box like we just did, because it gives us still such a strong power position. So they're deep striking out. What do I care? If they put, oh no, you dropped salamanders over here to shoot my eternal guard? Great, I'm charging you next turn with demigriffs. Oh no, you shot my demigriffs, you killed one. Cool, I'm Battleshock immune. Good job, I'm charging you with demigriffs. And the griffin, because you pissed me off. And these eternal guard running up to still this point. And it's just... I don't want to say it's that easy because there's a lot of variables, just a lot of dice involved, and anything can happen. But if you roll, av that was pretty average, actually. Just got to roll average, and when you're in your list design, you bake in these rerolls, like you know, all my rerolling ones to wound, let's say. And all of a sudden, I was wounding on threes, rerolling ones, and then we look, oh my god, that's actually 28 successes at neg two, ran two damage apiece. And then even rolling average can win you games because you deployed smart. And on that, we're going to go up to our full screen here. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Rocco, your boy. And I want to thank you for watching this class. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks to you for showing up to the master class. Channel's growing great. We're going to keep this growth going. And I will see you next class. And until then, dear viewer, Class is dismissed.